How do you brighten up a kitchen and an adjacent lounge dining room at the same time? Well, you knock a hole in the wall and make a kitchen hatch. Welcome to Real DIY. I'm doing this work for a family member and I'm going to be making an opening in the wall between their kitchen and lounge dining room. The opening is going to be where these three wall units are. The 600mm cupboard on the left will hopefully fit where the corner cupboard is at the moment. The unit in the middle is going to be rehung on the right hand side of the kitchen window and to do that I'll have to take off the existing cupboard and rotate that through 90 degrees so both cupboards can sit side by side. The first thing to do is to switch off the power so I can disconnect the main switch and remove the lights. Then take the doors off and the shelves out before removing the cupboards from the wall. I mark where I want the opening to be and start by cutting out the four corners so I can see if there's anything peculiar going on within the wall. I need to remove one and a half rows of tiles and I'm using my multi-tool to do this. I managed to cut this little tile with a blade that's got a very abrasive edge on the front and back and actually around the edge of it too. It worked rather well. Having marked the wall and cut it, it's time to take the panel out, which was very easy. Oh look! Oh look at that! We have a hole in the wall, although not quite all the way through, but that's not a bad start. There are four noggins that need to come out and of course there's the mains cables to deal with. One pair goes to this double socket outlet and the other pair to a heater in the tow board below. Time for some demolition. So what I'm going to have to do is to cut these wires, take them over to the left hand side and put a junction box in for both of these and the same with these two. I can disconnect these from the socket of course down here. I'm marking the sides of the opening before cutting it with my multi-tool. The owners have very kindly marked the other side of the wall with a paper template. Having cut through I can go around to the lounge, draw on the top and bottom edges and cut those. The moment has come to see if I can get this partition out. Ooh. Hey, look at that. Fantastic. Oh, yes. Wow, that's going to be great. A few plasterboard nails to remove and then I can cut the centre support and get on with the electrics. I'm going to be moving the mains cables over into this void at the side of the opening. Well, I've cut the length of this to go in the top here and I've notched this end of it so I can put these cables inside. This is the first time I've tried to get this up into here. Being sure to turn the power off first, I was able to disconnect the cables in the back of the double socket, pull them back and extend them. I have been able to cut the piece that goes on the top here and I've had to make this myself. The piece of timber I bought was wider than this and it was square edged both sides so I've had to round this. Using my router I cut a quarter round on one edge before turning the board over and doing the same on the underside and I've done that to both edges. I've left a recess in here uh, so that we can actually put a roller blind and it will be hidden up inside this edge. That will look quite nice from the lounge once I've finished this edge off nice and neatly. You won't really know there's a roller blind there until you actually come and pull it down. So that's cut to fit and I've also done these two side cheeks which will slip in there and that one pop in this side. To finish off the top of the opening, I'm using some thin softwood strip, 44 by 12 millimeters. I need to make two L-shaped pieces, one for each side of the opening. 
I'm making sure that I've got a 15mm lip on the front as this has to cover the thickness of the plasterboard. I'm going to be cutting this piece off in a minute. I want this to end up as an L shape. Here you can see the first one in situ. Now it's almost 6 o'clock and I'm a little bit hungry. If this was smelly vision, you'd be able to smell the toast behind me. So I'm going to take a quick break, have toast and peanut butter, a cup of tea, and I'll be back in a moment. Now these screws at the edge will be conveniently hidden under the side cheeks. I'm using a couple of clamps and some wooden blocks to make sure the side cheeks are centered. Let's give this a try. Oh, I think that's going to be very nice. Perfectly lined up at that edge too. Now these pieces have glued, I can cut off the strip at the back, which I'm going to reuse. Well, now I've cut that excess off, I need to plane up this edge. It's not going to be seen too much because it's up inside the cavity of the wall. I'm going to glue this strip on top, making the piece a little taller. Here I'm checking the glue line to make sure that I can't feel where that joint is. So that L-shaped piece you've just seen me cutting and trimming with the router is the same as this little piece up here. It goes up behind the plasterboard and I've glued it with lots of Evo stick, sticks like shit. And yes, you did hear me say the word shit because that's really what it's called. This is creating a recess, it's 70 millimeters deep, which should be about right to hide a roller blind. I pre-drilled two tiny holes and I'm gonna pop in a couple of pins. We'll put a little tiny fillet of sticks light down this edge. I'm just making good when I cut away too much plasterboard. Right, push this up as far as it will go. So I think I can say that for the time being, this side is done. I can make a start on cutting some of the moulding. I'm just making sure this wood is flush to the wall before fixing the mouldings. I'm going to put a little bit of wood glue on here. Let's just see how that lines up with that one. We'll pop a panel pin in here. That will double check. Just push the heads under the surface. A little light sand on this edge. You can just feel a, a paper's width of wood there. So a little tiny light sand and that will disappear. I'm cutting a recess in one piece of architrave that has to overlap a kitchen tile that I decided not to remove. The piece fits over the top of the tile very neatly. Decorators filler around the edges and wood filler for the screw holes. And now it's time to sand. Where the kitchen cupboards hung, I filled the fixing holes with polyfiller one fill. This goes on extremely smoothly and needs very little sanding. So before long, it's time to paint. It's been a few hours since I had the video camera on and in that time I've rubbed down the wood filler and I've given it two coats of white acrylic primer. Well, that's the first of two coats of super satin. So I'll give it about half an hour and a very, very light sand and a second coat. Now there's a bit of a problem here. When I tried to get the 600 millimeter cupboard up into that space, it wouldn't quite fit as it was rubbing on the right hand cupboard. Coupled with that, there is no way I can actually hook the cupboard onto the wall plates. This is one of them. The top space must have been blocked in after the cupboards were fitted. This is the 2x2 two two that's preventing me from lifting the cupboard into place. Annoyingly, I had to remove both cupboards. But having done that, I could then fit the wall brackets on the left-hand side and slide that larger cupboard in from right to left over the top of them. I discovered that the right-hand cupboard was only hanging by one bracket. Whoever fitted this kitchen has, as you can see, removed one. So that leaves me with a bit of a problem as I need to find a way of hanging this. I decided to make a couple of brackets using some leftover softwood. 
This was a little on the thick side, but the router soon dealt with that. I then cut it in two, which gave me my supporting corner blocks. I think these will definitely add a good bit of strength and give me something solid to fix through. So I think that is now ready to be offered up to the wall and mark the position for these screws. In the moment of truth. Oh, that's pretty promising. I think what I might actually do is put a hole further down so it goes through the back panel as well as this. Before fixing the cornice and the pelmet, I decided I would get on and fix the cupboard to the right of the kitchen window. Once again, there are a few tasks to remove before I can reposition the cabinet. But I had a bit of an accident. A broken tile produced a razor sharp edge, cutting my finger rather badly. I'm sure. Oh, look at that for a colour. This is why you should wear gloves. And to be honest with you, I was wearing gloves earlier on. But for some reason, I seem to have lost one of the gloves somewhere in here. The wall brackets need to come off and be positioned on the right hand side. So I'm just marking where the centre line is for the bottom screw and transferring that with my spirit level around the side wall before drilling and plugging the holes. Now something to remember when you're fixing these brackets is that they don't sit flush with the edge of the cabinets. They are inset and need to be about 20 to 25 millimetres from the outside edge. Yet more electrics to sort out. This is the on-off switch for the undercovered lights and I need to reposition it so that it's hidden. I shall have to move the cables across, so I cut a hole in the plasterboard to accommodate them and then patch up the ragged hole by gluing in a plasterboard offcut. Once that's filled over, rubbed down and painted, you'll never know it was there. I reused some cornice on the underside of the cupboards and some pelmet on the top. The larger door originally hinged on the right hand side, but that doesn't work here. I've had to turn it upside down so the hinges are now on the left. That meant repositioning the handle and you can just see the two holes where it used to be. I shall try and fill those. I just have to cut a tiny piece of wall tile for the right hand side of the opening and paint all the walls. Otherwise, it's job done. All the aggravation has paid off because the owners are really pleased and it's certainly brightened up that kitchen and the lounge dining room. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give it a big thumbs up and I'd be really appreciative if you subscribed as well. So until the next video, I'll say thanks very much. See you again soon and it's goodbye from Real DIY.